out of Heroes Heart. This is Kyle Ferguson. Today, I'm sitting down with Porky. You might know them as 30K Porky, Porky's 30K. This is Can't Censorship, or CCS, battling it out in the Storm Division versus Regen. Porky, how you doing today? I'm doing good. How about you, Kyle? Doing well. Thanks for joining me. This is, of course, a, a very popular hero, one of the top ban rates, uh, gold and below. So very excited to get everybody a view of what Akalethos is thinking. Looking fabulous with your giant cape on your rafter. Well done. Yep, the mountain combo is very important. Oh, of course, of course. You got to look fabulous on the Kalethos. Uh, are you are you playing with locked camera right now, or is this more of an artifact I, of the replay? I, actually, I always play it with locked camera. Yeah? Um, I know, uh, there's, you'd be surprised at how many high-level players play with locked camera. That's fabulous. Uh, wh wh why? How, how, how does that work on Medivh? I know you play a lot of Medivh. Um, I mean, it's a bit harder with those kind of heroes, but I think the reason I do it is because it's a lot easier for me to hit skill shots consistently. Okay, because your camera is always in the exact same angle for firing the shot? Yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. I've never thought about that as a repeatable edge you would have. Huh. Huh, okay. Well, uh, so... Uh, Obviously, maybe not something you can do on Chromie or Asmodan, or would you still just play with Lock Camera and deal with it? No, I still have Lock Camera on Chromie. Chromie's one of my most played, actually. I have a pretty good win rate with her as well. Nice. Nice. So a little easier to aim things like that gravity lapse here that we see. So yep. uh, getting going, you picked up Mana Addict. You're looking for orbs. Your team throughout this game is stepping up for you, getting those orbs for you. Uh, would you ever do anything else at level one though even if you didn't have a team no i would you? i would not i think the talents on kalthos are pretty set in stone um we'll see my build throughout the game or later in the game but, but yeah interesting set in stone huh? i know it goes a rather uh living bomb sort of route as the game goes on uh before we get into the next level talents i did want to ask you why kalthos here we're up against Double support ish Vala, and you were the very last pick for the team. Um, so the reason I like Kalthos here, I like Kalthos a lot against Lucio. Um, so one mm -hmm. of the reasons I like it is because it's good against the high five, because when people they um when Lucio goes to high five, there's a very high chance that they'll get the living bomb spread to them. Oh, okay. Yeah, when that they makes go sense. to the high five target. Yeah. So, so he has to move in to heal. It's kind of a Kyrazim sort of situation. They have to group to yeah. heal in the first place. And yeah, exactly. High five has forced him into more of this. I'm going to literally go touch you, and I might share a living bomb when I do that. Yeah, and Kalthos has the AoE damage with his Q as well, so it's very good against Lucia. Now, this opinion. is such a practice thing. You just aim right yeah. where Val is going to be, where you know Diablo is going to put her. Yeah, exactly. I, I DE like I think on Kalthos, you want to be DEing almost every time, and then you're gonna want to be pressing DW and then W again and queuing the backline minions when you're clearing waves. So this is all part of that Verdon Spheres business. If you're not familiar on Kalthos, you make an ability more powerful, and each one of these abilities kind of has its own augment based on what you do it with one of the big points that people like to point out is that q increases the radius but not the damage so don't go spamming it however you use these pretty freely in fact in this pit uh you tend to vary what are your like there's a big flame strike so when do you yeah, know what to do what um it depends on how grouped the minions are it depends on yeah it, it's more or less how grouped the minions are so you can see me doing a variation of different ones. Um, I think at this level, I need the W and Q to one shot the big to one shot the shrine minions. So you'll see me doing that a bit. But yeah, generally when I'm clearing the shrine, it just depends on how the minions are positioned, whether I D my Q or my W. So basically, always be thinking about your current. There, there is a pattern, and you mentioned some hard rules about how you should be augmenting and mostly putting it into your gravity lapse, which actually increases the stun duration by 50% when you yeah. augment it. 
increases the stun duration and the amount of targets you can stun. It's, um, you can stun up to three targets when you augment your E. But in something like the shrines where you need the clear, it's worth thinking about what kind of augment you're going to be doing. Yeah, we weren't real. I'm not really team fighting in the shrine, so I am free to use my verdant spears to augment my other abilities. So I've always felt that KT has really, really bad shrine clear, but it's probably more that I'm not using Q empowerment when I should, yeah, and I'm just living I've... bombing. Kel'Thas has one of the best shrine clears in the game, without a doubt. Interesting. Let's, let's talk a little bit about these talents that have happened in the background. Uh, you grabbed up the Nether Wind increased Gravity Lapse range by 30%. When Gravity Lapse hits an enemy here, refund 80 mana. So this is an always, you always go this. Yeah, I always go this. I think, yeah, I always go this one and four. Now, I remember I a particular Heroes Hearth video by McIntyre, where he was swearing by the energy roll, a royal here. Well, uh, it, for spam, I, for it's, like re It's fine. But I think generally when I'm playing this style of Kael'thas, especially against the enemy team, I can't really be in a range where I can get consistent gravity or energy royal value. Mm. I'm not sure specifically what the talent is called because like I'll just get slowed by blaze. I'll get entombed, that kind of thing, and I'll just get one shot. So I can't really be playing that far up front. That makes Which sense. Which is why I also didn't take Sunfire Enchantment. I usually take Sunfire Enchantment about, like, I'd say 90% of my games, but since I can't play in melee range or, like, in close range because of their heroes, I took Sun King's Fury. It's also really good on the Shrine and good versus Lucio, as I mentioned earlier. So you completed in the background here your mana added quest, getting those 20 orbs and actually going well beyond that. And it does go infinitely just on the mana bonus stack. But now you have access to the shield. So does that encourage you to step up further or are you still just terrified of Uther, Blaze kind of combo and then stay back? Um, I'd say I can make a bit more aggressive plays, but I'd still, I'm still playing in the, um, normal range that I would. I think um, the barrier is just used as a panic button more than I'm going to use it aggressively to get more damage in. Makes sense. Good hit there. So you mentioned that you skipped out on the Sunfire Enchantment. From what I've heard in the past, this is almost a strictly I'm going Pyroblast sort of thing. Would you still go Phoenix? Um... I'd say it's about half and half, depending on the games. I like Phoenix. I would normally go Pyroblast against a solo heal or Lucia, but since they have an Uther, Pyroblast is really bad against Uther because mm. of the armor he gives. And he could just Divine Shield, so... Say I'd Pyroblast the Vala, he'll just press Divine Shield and the Vala will kill my team, and I'll get no value from my ultimate. And it, you didn't sort of focus the phoenix on shrine clear more just using basic abilities here so what what makes you cast phoenix in a team fight or why use it at the times you're using it um so usually when i cast phoenix it's after i do my gravity lapse combo like you saw in that mid fight earlier i got the stun on Tavala and uther and i immediately press phoenix after i press my q under the e's um by the way you should when you're doing your gravity lapse combo you should always press your Q's right under your gravity lapses sure. immediately for max damage. Makes perfect sense. They're already, they're already gonna be standing there for a time that'll make it actually go off underneath them. Yep. So the, the Phoenix is more just about like a raw bonus bit of damage then. Yeah, or a bit of zoning, but I don't really use it for zoning that often. As the game has gone on, we now have a two-level lead. Have you changed the way you're playing, or is is it just safety, safety, safety all the way through? Um, I think I'm playing a bit more safer now, actually, just because um, with the with their heroes, they actually scale pretty well and uh, are a bit more of a threat to me late game. So okay. I actually have to watch my positioning more. Like as you see there, I was a bit aggressive and I really need to back up. So I press my mana addict or my arcane barrier as a panic button, and it saved my life. It's insanely easy to overstep on Kael'thas because of that living bomb range. Yeah. 
definitely something you gotta watch out for. So are you just eyeballs all on Diablo for most of these engages, or are you looking to set up your own gravity lapse starts to things? Uh, I mean, it depends on the situation. If you see something like we saw in that mid-fight um, about like a fight or two ago before the shrine, I got my own gravity lapse. And like the, all the entire early game, I was doing my gravity lapses off of Diablo combos. So it's just adjust to the situation. We got a level 13 talent that's been brewing here in the background. You went with the the Pyromaniac. Uh, each yep. time living bomb deals periodic damage, Kael'thas basically like cooldowns are reduced by 0.5 seconds. How are you playing around this and are you now starting to do double living bombs? Um, I don't usually deal. I usually deal double living bombs if I can't do my gravity lapses in fight or my gravity lapses on cooldown and I need to do more damage. Um, so the reason I like Pyromaniac is because it gets my gravity laps up faster. Okay. Um, so yeah, when I do my gravity laps combo, I usually do the, it's the E, then the Q, and then the W. So my W will be reducing my E and Q cooldowns when I use it. And this is, let's see, is it all? Each time living bomb deals periodic damage, so it's all enemies. Yep. So using it on yeah. lane clear here, where the lane clear you seem to favor one bomb. Okay, then there's the two bomb and you put the... Yeah, when I'm doing a lane clear, I usually do the double bomb I do. So why was that a big um, one? Why was it, what? Oh, you used an empowered flame strike there on top of the the goat man. Oh, that was just a that was just a, um finish off the wave. I didn't have my W cooldown. Oh, okay. So so Verdon spheres being a shorter cooldown than the actual living bomb yeah. empower what's available for you. Yeah, basically. Okay, that, that's actually a really that's a really good point though because I find myself often holding on. Just, just sitting there doing nothing with verdant spheres because i'm waiting for another double living bomb but you can for the slain clear scenario where it goes on longer double living bomb q and then empower a verdant spheres q again in order to increase yeah. that lane clear rather than wait around yeah if i know the wave is going to be cleared through my empowered flame check i'll just use it and move on since my verdant spheres is like a really short cooldown this I, this is honestly blowing my mind. I, I didn't know you could empower your Q flame strike and actually clear infernal shrines. I've, I've been beat up by these monkeys so many times trying to get living bombs out because I thought the cooldown would help. Yeah. So you it's basically very good. You basically yeah. have control of this. There's no reason to put out a phoenix at any point. You guys can poke this out if you really needed to. In fact, a Diablo Flame Stomp is what finishes this off for you. Yep, it is. So I just play safe, I run away from the Auric, I dodge the Entomb, and I let Diablo finish the Shrine while I go top and prepare for the Siege. You got the Ignite. Is this the normal talent you do? Yeah, this is the normal talent I do. I messed up my combo there. I'm lucky. But yeah, um, I guess the talent a lot. It procs with my Sun King's Fury, it procs with my Pyromaniac, and it's very good for poking with my level 20 as well. Interesting. I didn't really think about the cooldown reduction now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you're getting cooldown reduction when you cast the Flame Strike and get it. Yep. That's impressive. How. Uh, so, do you start trying to, like, just fish for hits? Are you more focused on targeting particular people with that ignite are you delaying your w's and making sure they're not already on your target like how how are you incorporating no, that i wouldn't say it really changes my play style i okay. think it's just an added bonus yeah my play style just stays the same obviously when i get my 20 my play style changes a little, little bit but yeah it basically stays the same and you want to keep doing the same things that you were doing before I know you mentioned that you like to go Sunfire Enchantment, so do you ever go with Twin Spheres? No, I don't. This, <laughs> no. I think, um, so but this is the Kael'thas build, except for Sunfire Enchantment. 
or and or your ults um you never stray away from these talents in my opinion like i know that on other heroes like there's definitely build variety but i think kalthos is a hero where there's little to no build variety is it just which a, is unfortunate yeah but... it, so we got things like backdraft here that slows i know that uh that fission bomb can be quite popular in the lower leagues are these just underperforming or just don't is there even an augment or buff to them that you would want compared to pyromania no i think pyromaniac at 13 is just superior just because of the cdr it gives me it really helps with the play style i'm doing where i'm trying to get my gravity lapses i think having the st the main reason i pick kalathos or i guess two reasons is for the aoe and having a stun on your a hard stun on my dps hero is really nice for cc chains i think people underestimate how nice it is to have a have hard cc on your range hero and here's kind of that fishing I was talking about that I saw earlier in the replay. You now have increased 40% cast range. If Flame Strike hits two or more heroes, its cooldown is reduced by four seconds. So you're just sort of spamming this thing, seeing if you can get things set up. Or and they've got double support, so why so many forward Flame Strikes? Um, it's just for poke damage. Okay. I will. It's more or less. Um, if I can get it. I'm sieging the tower and trying to hit the heroes, making the healers use their mana and cooldowns on my flame strikes is nice in case we get an engage. Mm. But yeah, I, you see me empowering my Qs a lot. Since I'm not really fighting, I'm just poking. I don't really need to empower my gravity lapses, so I'd rather just increase the chance of getting the ignite procs on my flamethrower. So this is more of a coordinated play thing where if they take the damage, your team might react to it by knowing things are on cooldown and would make action off those yeah. sort of cooldowns being available. Whereas Storm League people, uh, you'd get a poke, nobody saw anything in range, the tank didn't do anything, so uh, you're now on cooldown instead. Basically. Okay, makes perfect sense. more empowered more kind of just looking around so when do you know it's go time is, is diablo talking to you um it's me or diablo both of us can call the engage here but i'm mainly just looking on diablo since they're kind of playing really far back i'm waiting for Diablo, and we have our globals as you see falstead is getting the mm. mid keep for us to hawk is soaking bottom so we're not really looking to engage here we were fine giving the shrine since we have all our forts up. So just so in general, know, being yeah. frustrating. Yeah, just being annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and taking those cooldowns, of course, which are valuable while you have go globals yeah. who can come in. So so looking, is this, you keep poking, but we're taking cooldowns off of double support. Is there any comp that Kale Foss doesn't work? Or is there a situation, a hero you could replace on the enemy team that would make this wholly different from you? Because it just seems like you're getting to go anywhere you want. Um, I think Kalthos struggles against hard dive comps or like hard poke comps. I think having Kalthos against these like, having it against the Vala where you can play like a mid-range play style. It's not like a super poke. It's not super aggressive. I think that's where Kalthos shines. Interesting. So we have so we have the Lucio kind of counter because he's trying to bring people together. He's got that high five. And then would you say like a slower hero like Vala? Like would would Chromie be an example of the poke you're talking about? Yeah, I would not want to play Kalthos against Chromie because okay. she outranges me and I can't get my cooldowns on her. When you say dive, is it like traditional dive as we knew it, like Kerrigan's, or is there something else that comes to mind? Well, I'd say heroes like Maiev, Tracer um genji or i guess genji isn't that as annoying but like yeah my evan tracer are really good against kalthos so like dive and really sticky just, just staying yeah, on you for extended sticky, periods like muradin as well mm. diablo is pretty good against him if not vala who do, who do you think really can kalthos can be picked to maybe as a one-to-one -one counter like this lucio um, I wouldn't say Kalathos one-to-one counters any hero except maybe Alexstrasza. 
Oh, that makes sense. Everyone's got to group up, get in the, get in the yeah. circles. Yeah, also you could take Bird Flesh against Alex Straza, because typically Alex Straza comps have um, high health pool heroes like the Diablo, and they're grouped up, so I think that's the only time I would ever take Burn Flesh, actually, is versus Alex Straza comps. Definitely seems like a rarity. I'm not sure I've seen an Alex Straza in a while. Yeah, Alex Straza is pretty rare nowadays, but yeah, I think that's more or less the only hero I would say Kael'thas is a hard counter to. And that burn flesh we were talking about is a level seven talent where you deal yes, eight percent giant killer. It is. Would that would that build take you into Fury of the Sunwell? Um, I don't think so. Um, I'd say just the ignite. Still, it's. I think it's just way too good not to take, in my opinion. It makes way more sense when you factor in your level 13 talent pick here. That ignite would be so valuable. Yep. So you're able to solo camps pretty regularly on Kael'thas. Is there a yeah. level that you are able to do that with greater frequency? Um, I'd say I, these these type of camps, I just do them whenever I can solo them at level, at level like one minute in when they spawn. Okay. So. It's not a big deal for me. I do need a little help if I'm doing the hard camp. But, yeah. I can just solo the camps from one minute on. You guys have a pretty dominant map control. You've got double stacked mercenaries in the middle now. You're all back. Diablo's actually a little forward. What, what was he doing up there? Um, I think he was just looking for um, picks and scouting. But I told him to come back since... Basically, we're just trying to play around the shrine. Their base is going to be under attack by our double globals. So I'm just going to be clearing the shrine, putting pressure on them to come at us on the shrine. So we're either going to have a Punisher coming down the mid lane or they have to defend our base. Here you kind of isolate yourself up. Is this a result of Falstead coming around? Like, or just the, the yeah, character uh, sort of range? Did say the Falstead coming around, but basically it was to get away from the vala i'm not really scared of the entomb unless the vala is there because leoric can't really solo kill me mm. as you see leoric is a little aggressive trying to go for me his sure. vala wasn't there so we just turn on him and kill him and without the threat of the vala you have no threat then yeah exactly now the gravity lapse does catch on the shrine minions, correct? So your pierce would have to yes, account it for does. that. I do have to look out for that. Dancing around under the side here. I mean, it seems it seems like you guys got a, a pretty good go at it. It's absolute chaos with the double support though, and Blaze yeah. just lasts so long. But there's that. I'm basically hit. just trying to stall them while the minions kill our core. Right. Our okay. core, I mean. So that 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 makes that fight make way more sense because it was very chaotic. It was it, they were surviving for a long time. You were walking up perhaps into a dangerous position all because of map awareness. You we were able to do this particular move. Let's yep. uh we'll rewind a quick moment here just to look at the damage as the game ends. And of course, it will be missing that last couple of hits there. So Vala had a lot of damage uh being double supported is this kind of a the kalefas zone though that you would expect him to normally end up in or is there a situation where he should even be top top damage um i wouldn't say there's really a situation where he should be top top damage um sure i'm top damage on my team but that's because falstead was off soaking like he should be the entire game but Kalfas doesn't have a lot of a lot of damage. He's not really a hyper carry like you'd expect a Vala to be. Like Vala has a lot of damage. He's meant to have really high damage numbers. That's why um, they work in double support. But Kalfas is more AOE damage, being a bit annoying and having the stun. Like I'd say, what the stun is what makes Kalfas a really good hero. And not to mention you had, I mean, everyone had a lot of siege damage in this game, but that that fluidness of which you use your Verdant Spheres in the different situations is such a huge part of this character being played well. We talked a lot about the enemy team just briefly. Do you have any best friends for Kael'thas uh, when it comes to, like, that Diablo, or would this Falstad be something you look for? Um, I think Diablo and Falstad are both decent with Kael'thas. 
I wouldn't recommend picking Kael'thas Falstead together unless the enemy comp has or is a comp like that where they can't really pressure our backline. Like the Vala is not really looking to dive us. So I'm comfortable playing two squishy ranged heroes. Um, but with the Gust and my A AoE damage and the Phoenix, I think when when we did that, um, it really worked out for us because having the Kalthos AoE damage with the Gust, um, works out really well. That makes perfect sense. So the, the risk factor of running two squishies when that's what you're mainly weak to. As we end here, any any final bits of advice that would be for brand brand new Kalefoss players who are looking to get into him? Um, for advice, I'd mostly just when you're starting out with Kalefoss, I'd mostly focus on how you're using your tra trait. Using your trait correctly is very important in playing Kalefoss. Uh, managing your trait, using it on waves, how you use it on waves like the D, W, W, and Q on the waves, or it, when you do use the D, E in fights. I think that's what a lot of people should focus on when they're starting to play Kael'thas, or even just playing Kael'thas when they have a lot of games. Using your trait effectively is key to playing him right. And some great examples of that through this game here. Thank you for joining me. Everyone watching, be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell here at Heroes Hearth as the educational content will continue in between seasons. We'll see you soon.